It seems like this has always been about 25 years away. Why is this happening now? That's a great question, Corey. Um, it's really been an exciting year for autonomous cars. I think a lot of this has to do with Google. I think they just made such a big splash and such a big impact. Uh, for example, the Steve Mann video giving a blind person a ride in a self-driving car. That created uh, a sort of wave of momentum, and now the car manufacturers are sort of catching up and, and investing a lot of time and effort into this. Yeah, is this about catch-up? I mean, I, you know, Michigan's been playing catch-up. Uh, the automakers in Michigan have been playing catch-up. I would argue for at least 30 years. Uh, is this about catch up because they're afraid Google's going to get away ahead in the same way that Japan got ahead in the 70s? I wouldn't say that. I think that uh, there are basically two different approaches to self driving vehicles. Uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has came up with a definition of levels. So, like a level three car would have a person in charge of the car and they might have to take control uh, in selected areas. A level four vehicle would be fully autonomous where you could just take a nap or read a book or cruise on your laptop while the car did everything. And the level three technology is more of an evolution from existing active safety systems, things like anti-lock brakes and adaptive cruise control, in which you know the, the US uh, car makers and, and Europe and Japan have had just a, a tremendous record of great technological progress. And so the sort of path of the sort of conventional car companies is more adding in an evolutionary sense to existing active safety systems, whereas Google are going more for a revolutionary long-term change towards the sort of radical transformation of the transportation system. I mean, all things being equal, uh, not that my Google search engine crashes, but, you know, when you talk about a crash, I kind of feel like I'd rather have Ford and Chevy in charge of this and General Motors and the like in charge of this kind of thing. But I, I want to get back to this notion of levels. I think it's a really interesting way to sort of see the differences in what's possible and what's probable. I mean, this notion that this level three, that is essentially a, a car that's a little more tricked out. I mean, like my car warns me when I'm about to back into something. My wife's car warns me when I'm about to drive into something, a little, a little back into something. This is just taking that to sort of one more step. What's the crucial trigger that takes something from level two to level three? Well, let's see. Uh, I guess the a big uh, issue in the technology is mapping. So one of the things that enables Google to go to the more advanced level is their mapping technology. So with a very accurate map, uh, it enables the car to localize itself more precisely. So think about GPS sort of on steroids, like really, really accurate positioning coupled with really good maps. That simplifies the sort of driving task for the computer algorithms, and that enables more sort of hands-off um, uh, operation. The uh, more traditional active safety systems, they are adding in things like uh, adaptive lane keeping and so forth, for example, using low-cost computer vision systems, and that's all very exciting. But without the, the mapping technology is probably like a key increment that Google seems to have, uh, obviously, a big uh, leap ahead of, of most of the others.